Hello. Okay. Hi. Happy April Fool's Day, everyone. I am Nancy Lene Wu, and I am recording this for April 1st, 2021, as my very first poetry prompt for NaPoRIMO, which is National Poetry Writing Month. Um, I am taking the fool card here and jumping off into doing 30 writing prompts in 30 days for the Napa Reno 3030 Challenge. Um, so if you are a poet, you may already know all about April and their third and the 3030 Challenge. If you're not a poet, welcome to the challenge of trying to write one poem a day, every day for 30 days during the month of April. We do this every year. Um, poets like to celebrate poetry in this way. Um, Last year was actually the first year I ever completed 30 poems in 30 days. It was right at the start of the pandemic. And I did a writing workshop live on Zoom that ended up going for 91 days rather than just the 30. Um, pretty incredible. So what I'm doing this year instead of holding a live workshop is recording a video prompt and inviting you out there <laughs> across time and space meeting here in YouTube cyberspace, inviting you to just open the creative channel with me, follow along. I'm gonna be sharing a poem every day for the month of April. And each poem is going to be one poem that has changed me as a writer, as a poet. Um, so different poems are going to speak to different people. The poems I'm gonna share might be familiar to you they, or they might be new. And I always say with anyone giving you a prompt, take whatever inspiration arrives to you in particular from that prompt. So it might be writing to the prompt, it might be writing adjacent to the prompt, it might be not really writing to the prompt at all and simply taking a moment or a thought or an idea or an image from anywhere <laughs> to get started. So uh, at Surprise Line here, which I am the founder of, it's a community poetry workshop that is based here where I live in Long Beach, California, but through the internet, hey, I'm talking to you anywhere in the world. Um, so we believe here that everyone can write and that the practice of writing allows us to cultivate a deep relationship with our internal self as well as our external world. These workshops that I hold, so you can, you can find out about live in-person workshops, but for this video series, I'm gonna apply the same principle, which is the prompts are designed to be nurturing for the soul as well as stimulating for the mind. Um, this mission I hope to be living is to spread the joy and necessity of creativity through language, everywhere, one line at a time. So welcome to Surprise the Line. Um, William Stafford said, everything is telling one big story. And I really believe that. I think poetry catches, poets catch glimpses of little bits of that story and we share it in our own way in our own unique voice through our individual personal experiences so i'm going to invite every single one of you out there to lean into your physical mental emotional spiritual experience during the writing process um, giving yourself some time to write can be very therapeutic and um, creative expression is something that I think is essential to feeling alive for um, humans in the world. <laughs> Everyone expresses creativity differently, so it doesn't have to be through poetry. This is one avenue and um, I'm happy to share the creative channel of poetry as I'm sitting in it here with you. Um, you can also, by the way, YouTube is new to me, so I'm going to invite you to speed up the talking time if you want to get through some of whatever I'm saying quicker, because I'm not going to be editing these on this go round, everybody. I'm doing one hot take, 
imagining that I am just teaching you um, in a live Zoom classroom. And so welcome, welcome to the table. The way that the video prompts are gonna go is I'm gonna give you a step for each part of the journey um, and you can spend as much time or as little time as you want for each step. I'm gonna give a recommendation, but you know, this is designed to get you writing just quickly on the page without judgment. So if that means 10 minutes of writing, if that means 30, if you have more time, you know, make it work for you. And then at the end of each video prompt, I will spend a little bit, um, spend a quick minute talking about the poet, their life and the, their influence on me. Um, so just a little bit of commentary. I will start with um, also saying <laughs> that, you know, uh, we're going to need a lot of diverse voices singing across the sea of humanity. So I'm going to be choosing um, hopefully a good smattering of poets that you might connect with. Um, and I did a little intro on the last video. So if you um, vibe with what I'm about, you might like them. Okay, so here's our first poet, Mary Oliver. I'm gonna be sharing this poem as our model text called Wild Beast. And it is one of the very famous poems. Um, out there, it's very famous for me. So you might be already familiar with it. Um, if you are, I invite you to just enjoy <laughs> hearing it again. And if it's new to you, all good. Let's jump in. This is Wild Geese by Mary Oliver. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves about despair yours and I will tell you mine meanwhile the world goes on meanwhile the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscape over the prairies and the deep trees the mountains and the rivers meanwhile the wild geese high in the clean blue air are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. So, I encourage you to go listen to Mary Oliver reading that poem on YouTube herself. She does it's a very beautiful reading. Um, so thinking about that poem, again, I'll share a little bit of my reactions to it at the end. But to get us straight into the prompt, welcome. Here we go. Our first prompt of 30 prompts in 30 days. Wild geese for Mary Oliver. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Um, here's your prompt. Step one, I like to invite you to do a quick write. This, oh, you know what? I'm doing one take, so I'm going to interrupt myself like I would in a class. And remember that before we sit down to write, part of what we're doing here is creating a container for your creativity. So to invite you into that container, I'm going to read a mantra, and I invite you to listen to the words. I am here and present with my experiences. I am grounded and open. I have unlimited access to the infinite flow of creativity always around me. Whatever happens on these pages is what's meant to happen. I'm not judging myself or my writing. I'm just writing. I have everything I need to begin already inside of me. Oh, and I'm spelling in and I'm ready to write. Okay, so here we go. First step, 
put one minute on your clock and make a T chart. So that means just make a two columns down your page. And in the left column, write down phrases that you learned to be true as a child. We all have these things that we learn from the world. For example, children should be seen and not heard or poor people are lazy. Oh, who says that? But we learn it somehow. Or I am not good enough that we pick up from our environment, right? So we all have these things. You might have positive things. So it could be positive or negative. Just think about writing down a few however many come to you in one minute, um, a little truism beliefs you picked up as a child, okay? So go ahead and put one minute on the clock and pause the video. And when you're back, the next step is to do the next column. So in the right-hand column, once you have your, a few statements, maybe three, maybe five of beliefs as a child, in the right-hand column, put another minute on the clock and write a new statement with that the opposite is true. So this is totally up to your interpretation. So if it were children should be seen and not heard, maybe the opposite is treat children as people. What an idea. Or maybe poverty is not a moral failing. Hmm. Or I am inherently worthy. So you don't even have to believe it. Just think about an opposite statement. And go ahead and put one minute on and pause. Okay, welcome back. So after you've done those two quick writes, I'm gonna invite you to do a five minute free write. Again, if you don't have a lot of time, you can probably skip this one, but if you're gonna do a free write, take a moment, five minutes, to let yourself just stream of consciousness right across the page What's coming up for you when you look at these statements? What realizations, memories, questions, responses, whatever's, whatever's going. So five minutes on the clock now. All right, welcome back to step four. Um, two minutes this time, super quick. Uh, creating a, an image bank. So it's like a word bank, but specifically I want you to think about Looking at these phrases, what kind of setting comes to mind? Where do these beliefs exist? So it might, you might want to just choose one of them. You might want to be thinking about a few at a time. But imagine a scenario, a real world setting, you know, a coffee shop, a bakery, a beach, something tangible in your mind that comes, to, um, comes with these phrases and describe any Imagistic sensations, so the senses, what can you see, hear, touch, taste, or smell, and just reassociate. Remember, these little, these little images, impressions from our subconscious is what poetry is built on. So put two minutes on the clock and just do that. All right, welcome back to the final step, which is the poem. This is the long one. So thinking about what you have on your page already, thinking about these declarative phrases from the T-chart. So like Mary Oliver opens in her poem, you do not have to be good. Think about taking one of your phrases, whatever that statement is, whether it's a belief that you had as a child or a belief that you have now or an opposite statement, however you kind of want to formulate it, but take a declarative statement and try putting it at the beginning or at the end, or as a refrain, which is a repeating phrase, somewhere in your poem. That part, you know, what works for you. And fill in the rest of the poem with sensory imagery that you can pull from the word bank, the image bank that you created. Um, and see if you can set a scene, like in a physical location for this belief to be existing. And you can let the scene shift if it does, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Um, and then work on filling out the poem with whatever comes to you. Let your imagination lead, put in some of those words on the page um, and maybe you surprise the poem or yourself with some kind of realization and maybe it's a realization that is couched in images or maybe it's a declarative statement. But so these are some ideas to 
to um, use what you have just brainstormed and go ahead and set 20 minutes on the clock. Give yourself some time. Again, you can change the time. You can do five minutes. If you want to just do a quick little thing, you can give yourself longer. And if you want to come back after you are finished writing as if we're in a real workshop and kind of tune in, I have a little bit of an author reflection on Mary Oliver and where this poem came from for me. So happy writing and maybe I'll see you back in about 20 minutes or so. Okay, so if you just did some writing and you're tuning back in to hear a little bit about Mary Oliver. Welcome back. I hope your writing was interesting, surprising. You know, whatever you write today is what you're meant to write. So congratulations on writing your first poem of April, if you're following along. If you're, if you're accessing this in the future at any point, still yay, congrats on your poem or whatever kind of notes you started. Um, everything is creative process. So just celebrate whatever you accomplished. Um, and now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Mary Oliver. She's one of my most influential poets, one of my favorite poets. If you are not familiar with her, she, I guess you could call her a nature poet. She definitely writes about nature, um, but she writes about nature in a way that combine sort of the spiritual and the mystical and the physical world. It's pretty incredible. And because I feature nature in a lot of my work, Mary Oliver has really been influential to me. I first encountered that poem, Wild Geese, um, with Michelle Frankie at UCLA Extension. And um, I remember Michelle saying that poem had <laughs> changed her and stays with her and I am so grateful she introduced me to it because it is a poem that has done the exact same for me it has stayed with me over all these years and I actually teach it on the first day of fifth grade poetry class um, and they really like it they really get it there's something really simple clear pristine yet otherworldly about Mary Oliver's work, um, which is incredible to me. So she was born in 1935, died in 2019. I remember when that happened, um, she was 83 years old. And within her 83 years, 53 of them, she was publishing books. And by my count on Wikipedia, it looks like she published over 30 poetry books won the National Book Award, the Pulitzer Prize. She also had five nonfiction books, craft books, uh, a few of which are on my shelf. And because I have read so much of her craft essays, so many of her craft essays, you know, I feel like I know her a little bit, like I know her voice. However, she's actually very private and didn't really do a lot of interviews in her life. She said she'd rather her work speak for itself which is so interesting and like maybe an idea worth considering but in today's like Twitter age I don't know social media I wonder wonder Mary Oliver's relationship to social media anyway um, her spirit is so strong and I feel like she's one of those poets who even though she has passed her work lives inside of me all the time um, I have a few more of her books you know I have not read all 33 books but maybe hope to one day um interestingly Mary Oliver went to two different colleges but does not have a degree um so that is a point of interest um for anyone who feels slighted or adjacent to the institution of academia um, I think Mary Oliver is one of those poets who shows you don't necessarily need an MFA, you know, to be a brilliant poet, but over 53 years writing 33 books, I mean, that's a lot of writing. So, you know, <laughs> what I'm learning from that is 
that the life of a writer is is just constant. I mean, it's constant thought, production, editing, publishing. Anyway, um, I've used a line from this poem, Wild Geese, in one of my own poems called Sleep Cycle. I borrowed the phrase, in the family of things, because I just think that's such a great way of getting at a global perspective and definitely influenced me in my work. Um, you know, apparently Mary Oliver uh, studied or knew, I'm not entirely sure the details, but <laughs> worked in some way with Edna St. Vincent Millay, who was the first woman to win the Pulitzer Prize in 1923. And she was a feminist activist. So basically it seems like Mary Oliver was tutored by and the same Vincent Millay, which is pretty incredible. Um, you know, just a couple of quotes here about Mary Oliver before closing out is from a bio in Poetry Foundation, and I'll put the link in the description. A few, a few uh, admirers of her work have have said a few interesting things. One of them is that she stands quite comfortably on the margins of things on the line between earth and sky, the thin membrane that separates human from what we loosely call animal. It's incredible. I think that's one of the things I love the most about Mary Oliver. She has this spiritual transcendent reverie, reverence about her, but she's also so grounded in the physical animalness of our being. So she's got that wild as well as that transcendent and ooh, wild and transcendent. That's not a combination I love. Anyway, um, another quote that has been said about Mary Oliver is she's among the few American poets who can describe and transmit ecstasy while retaining a practical awareness of the world as one of predators and prey. So again, that natural animalistic interest alongside this <laughs> ecstatic, ecstatic experience of consciousness. And that's just thrilling to me. Um, and I'll just close out here with one of her own lines from her poem, When Death Comes, and thinking about a poet's intention of living, especially after they've passed, hearing their words about what their life's work means to them is, is very powerful to me. <laughs> this part I'm about to read makes me a little emotional. So here we go. She said, when it's over, I want to say, all my life, I was a bride married to amazement. I was the bridegroom taking the world into my arms. Mm. Mm. So good, both the bride and the bridegroom married to each other, taking the world in your arms. If that's not a way to live. So if you are interested, um, <laughs> read more Mary Oliver so many amazing poems and um, I hope you hope you enjoyed this prompt I hope you learned maybe a thing or two about Mary Oliver or refreshed your memory about her um, thanks for joining me here for April 1st and the first prompt of 30 during 2021 Napo Rimo Nancy Lene Wu of Surprise Line signing out see you tomorrow <laughs>